Hello, everybody. Sorry, a bit of a late start. Hello, Aperture in Way. Welcome back to the house in Fata Morgana. Last time, we actually got a bad ending for real. And not because of a freaking timed choice that I didn't know about. Or me actually, me getting it just for the hell of it. But I actually legitimately picked the wrong choice. Which didn't seem like the wrong choice. Because you'd figure you want to be a nice person and... And walk and walk Maria home. But no. <laughs> Yukimasa brutally kills you. Of course, we didn't exactly fare better in there too much better in the main story, but at least we lived. Uh, Michelle was injured fucking severely by Yukimasa. Like, wasn't it all the bones in his one of his hands broken? Like, oh my god. And I think he got a sword stab through part of him. Like, Jesus Christ. I just... Uh, <laughs> but, luckily, Team Michelle pulled through. And uh, Mel came and brought Pauline. And she finally saw his beastly side. Which is something she never really saw in, uh, in story number two. And... Uh, it looks like we're finally going to get his key. Thanks to Pauline. Which leads me to believe that now Michelle can focus completely on getting Jacopo's key. And from, from what it looks like, that's going to be the toughest one of all. So let's get back into it. I actually had to overwrite my old save files. Oh, God. I can't believe how long this is turning out to be. I'm glad to hear you've decided to take action. <laughs> Although it's kind of cute, he's apologizing for it. <laughs> Maybe it is something he really can't control then. Sorry about your fingers and arm. I'm still alive. That's what matters. The third key is in the Lord's possession. You said you needed it by noon of the Harvest Festival, yes? Which means we need to act quickly. That's correct. We must set Morgana free before the bell tolls noon tomorrow. Then tonight, that's the next time the Lord will be here. Oh God, it looks like we're gonna have to talk to Jacopo all at once, oh God. Oh boy. Damn! <laughs> I suppose that's one way of doing it! Tonight I'll kill him and take his key. Damn! <laughs> Yuki Masa, you switch sides pretty damn fast. Wait! No. We're not shedding any blood to get his key. Do you remember what I said a few minutes ago about not committing any further sins? Jeez Louise, Bubby. <laughs> Look at how pouty he is! He's like, oh, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> he is not likely to hand over the key without a fight, though. We need to convince him. Not force his hand. Besides, simply opening the door is not enough. Why not? My goal here is to save Morgana's soul. In order to do that, I need to pacify at least some degree of the hatred she bears in it. Hatred rooted in a perception of you and the things you've done to her. I need to change that perception. I'm not quite following. What do you mean by change her perception? For you and the Lord to tell your stories, 
to describe what happened from your perspectives. You want my perspective? I do. Something in your motivations or your circumstances might serve to lessen the animosity she holds for you. The greater the discrepancy in what she believes to be the truth and the full story, with everyone's perspectives included, the greater the chance she may have a change of heart. Okay, I now understand what you want from me. However, my perspective will do nothing to serve that end. There is no ambiguity, no justification for my actions. That's what I thought. Like he, like he just has been shown to kill for the sake of it. Regardless, I would still like to know the whole truth if you're willing to tell me your part of it. Okay. I'll come by your room later today. Uh, hey! Is it all right if I'm there too? Sorry. I would rather if you weren't. Why? Everything you need to know. I've told you already. I captured a witch. No. I kidnapped a young girl for profit and imprisoned her in the tower. My motivation, as I said, was to keep your church funded. Those are the facts. The things I did along the way were brutal and inhumane. I hope you can understand. I wouldn't want the woman I love to hear any of that. Oh my god! Oh, he said it! He said it! Oh my god! I understand. I'll see you again later today, in the day. Sorry. I'll be waiting. I should get going too. You're gonna to need medication or something, something to get that arm dressed properly. And if there's anything else I can get you, let me know. If you wanna see a doctor, I'll find you the best one I can. I'm so sorry for ever doubting you. No. I understand. I'm glad you came at all. Me too. Well, see ya. I'm kind of surprised. He's actually got a soft spot, huh? And I was sure you were full of it when you said the two of them had a thing going. Blimey, what does she see in a guy like him anyway? Well, he is pretty hard, I have to admit. Jeez. She's got bad taste in guys, that's for sure. But yeah, personality-wise, yeah. Well, what, what's with that look? Just admiring, just admiring rather inappropriate remarks. Uh, s sorry. I was just so relieved it kind of came out. It's okay. You almost caught a smile out of me. Oh my god, they're slowly becoming friends! I do wonder if Javi is here. Uh, he probably is. David, welcome to the stream, by the way. I do, I wonder if, I, I think Javi should be here, but I don't know if he's going to play a role in, the, role in the story.
I've never seen you smile before. <laughs> Hi, jeez. Hi. Blame being relieved, too. Now, would you mind helping me get back to my room? Sure, no problem. My shoulder's all yours. You know, you really are something else, Michelle. I could hear your th you through the door of as I was getting it opened. And honestly, I'm amazed you're able to stand up to him like that. <laughs> I don't want to get my hopes too high just yet, but I'm not starting to think you might be able to do something about the Lord. That's reassuring. Thank you. Sure. Anyway, let's get going. You should get as much rest as you can until he shows up. Well, I mean, you should be going to see a doctor with these wounds. He really should. Oh yeah, Nelly's been worried sick about you all day. I'll have to tell her not to pounce on you, because I'm sure she'll come running as soon as she hears we found you. That's right, Giselle. It seems like Giselle also kind of disappeared in some way. I don't I have no idea why either. And it seemed like she knew she was going to disappear. Which is even weirder. Giselle, you were right. I do have people here who will support me. People who are grateful for me and who show concern for me. But you have to know, Giselle, that it's your voice I want to hear more than anyone else's. Oh my god! Why can I not hear you? Where are you, Giselle? Giselle. It's almost sunset. Looks like the snow didn't stick. You couldn't actually see the snow last night. Couldn't, could you, Giselle? Was that when the light started fading from the sea of darkness and gazing you? Or had it been going on even longer than that? Why didn't you say anything? Not a word. I don't believe you're gone for good. You're still out there. Somewhere. I know it. And I will come for you. Oh, yay! I swear it. Just a moment. Yep. Here I am, as promised. I heard you talking, so I thought there was someone with you. But you're alone. It's only me, yes. I see. As I told you earlier, my perspective on events will do nothing to change Morgana's mind. I would still like to hear what you have to say. <sighs> All right. Not being from this land, I don't believe in the local god. Nor do I think priests and preachers any better than corn artists. Where did that come from? What I'm trying to say is if I give a confessional, it won't be to another human. Hello, Lambda Delta. Welcome to the stream. You're an angel. Oh, wow. 
Damn, Michelle. You've got people believing you're some kind of divine being. I mean, to your credit, you do look like a supernatural person. You freaking got that anime final boss kind of look about you. Come again. The angel from the stained glass window. That's you, isn't it? Wait, how on earth did you come to that conclusion? I was thinking about everything you said earlier in the cellar. The fact that you knew about Morgano. The fact that you could see into my heart, and in particular. All your talk about saving people's souls. Salvation is not man's job. Which means you must be something else. I'm... I will tell you everything. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. I think that we've uh, gotten a rather strong party member to join Team, Mel uh, Team Michelle here. Oh my god. Every foolish mistake. Every terrible crime. In exchange, in exchange, I would like you to tell me what I am to do next. To lead me down the path I am to take. I... I terrify myself. With every passing day, my ability to tell which direction I'm supposed to be heading is in dolls. So after I tell my story, I want you to do that for me. Please, will you show me the way? I'm not going to bring up a meme here. I, I can no more decide the path you take than you. But you soar into my heart. Giselle, if you were here, you would encourage me to agree to his request, wouldn't you? Okay. I can't guarantee that anything I'll have to say will be of use. But I will do the best I can to lead you in the right direction. Thank you. Oh my god. Alright, Team Michelle. We're gonna get a swordsman now. I hope he's gonna actually tell Michelle his name so his name tag will change. Now, before I begin, there's one thing I need to clarify. What? Wait, what? What? No way. But he literally... Why are you lying to her? Oh my god. I am not in love with Pauline. She does play an important role in my life, though. That much is true. She's your tether. Exactly. I also, I suppose you could say, admire her. She is everything I am not. Everything I cannot be. Is that something I should tell her, you think? That I don't love her? That I'm incapable of feeling love? Should I tell her that? Knowing she genuinely loves me. My god, Yukimasa, you know, I think the fact that you're able to even understand this aspect of yourself proves that you're not beyond reproach. Hmm. 
My instinct tells me I shouldn't. I know very well I'm lying to her, but there are circumstances in which a lie is preferable to the truth, are there not? With that said, I'm ready to begin. You have my full attention. As you know, I am not from this land. Oh, as you know, I am not from this land. The issue is, I don't know any more about where I came from than you. Really? He's amnesiac. I remember the Silk Road, searching far out before me as far as the eye can see. Clouds of dust whisping across the bare dirt trail. That endless expanse of red earth remains branded into the very fabric of my mind. But beyond that, most of my memories are gone. Damn, that is really interesting. I can only clearly remember the last five years or so of my life. In my oldest real memory, I was a slave. I didn't work on the nobleman's estate, but instead I did physical labor, construction work. I built roads and buildings, tore down hills and mountains. That's where it was decided someone built like I am would be the most use, I suppose. And while I doubt I need to tell you this, living conditions were miserable. Other slaves would have withered away and died on a daily basis. Working a nobleman's estate would have been easier, without a doubt, if only for the fact I would have, ha would have had a specific master. I don't remember anything about my life before becoming a slave. All I have are these few images, from which I can guess that was part of a caravan. Or perhaps the messenger. I vaguely remember being waylaid. We were vastly outnumbered. Massacred with little resistance. Or at least, that's why it, I assume that's what happened. When I next woke up, I had been stripped bare and was surrounded by men I didn't recognise. The words they spoke were gibberish to my ears. But I could tell from their tone of voice and expressions that the thing they, things they were saying were not friendly. They seemed to be mocking me, laughing at me. As you might expect, I attempted to protest, but evidently I had been beaten quite badly while I was unconscious. My joints were stiff and swollen, on top of my dehydration, so I could barely move, let alone put up a fight. I 
as strong as I might have been at full health. I was in no condition to do anything then. You have no idea what that's like. Oh my god! <laughs> Oh my god, yes he does! Yes he does! How it feels to be abused and humiliated, desperate for food and water. Oh my god, Michelle is just like... <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me, bro? Are you kidding me? I like, they're like, seriously, oh my god. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, as I was saying, oh my god. I was a slave for one grueling, torturous year. No one treated me like a human being. My god, who would have expected... Michelle is super able to empathize with this. There was no one from the same part of the world as me. And there was no one to come to my aid. Over time, I came to learn their language. I can only speak it. I don't know how to read or write. But to be honest, I think I was happy on not understanding what people were saying about me. They had many words to describe me, none of them flattering. They had many words to describe me, none of them flattering. Some of them would even call me Beast. Oh my god. And the longer I was treated as something less than human, the more I began to question whether I really was one. A darkness grew inside me with each repeated insult. I wanted to make them pay for the daily abuse. And who wouldn't? The desire to exact vengeance when you've been mistreated is only natural. It's perfectly reasonable. But they were right about what I was deep down. A beast. Though for the wrong reasons. And my revenge went far beyond what could be considered reasonable. Oh well, this is a new background. Damn. Wow, this looks like an impressionist painting. Four years ago, I was sitting in a carriage as it rattled along a dirt road. This was not the kind of carriage you rode around town in, town in, but a filthy slave transport. It was packed from front to back, back with slaves, or soon to be slaves, I suppose I should say. They were men, young women, and even children. Everyone wore a look of hopelessness on their faces, and no one had the strength left to resist. They looked like me a year earlier. Deprived of food and water, 
and beaten into submission. The slave traders' guards were armed, of course. Swords hanging from their hips, ready to cut down anyone who showed any sign of resistance. So they sat there, lamenting their fate. Sitting beside me was a young girl, crying in silence. Glancing over at her, I caught a glimpse of her face. Large chunk of skin seemed to have fallen off it. It was, suffice to say, an unusual sight. But beyond that, I didn't think much of it. Oh my god! Four years ago! He was on the freaking trip! Oh my god! He was on the transport! With Morgana! But beyond that, I didn't think much of it. I didn't find it disturbing or unpleasant. Perhaps because I had a similarly unusual appearance. What caught my attention, though, was the way she was crying. I'm not sure how to describe it. But it seemed different somehow from everyone else crying in the carriage. It was almost like... Her tears were not for herself. Why are you crying? At my question. The girl turned her head up to look at me. Surprise crossed her face for a very few brief seconds, but that was her only reaction to my appearance. I assume her thought process was roughly the same as mine, so she felt no need to fear me. After a moment's hesitation, she said, Yup, that's her! I'm sad because I didn't get the chance to show my gratitude to people very dear to me. Her response perplexed me to no end. Why was she concerned about showing gratitude? Why was she not despairing of her own circumstances? Why was that the emotion that gripped her in that moment? Not hatred for the slave trader or sorrow for herself? To this day, I still don't understand. But that wasn't the only thing I found curious. Her voice, despite being soft, cut through the crying and wailing of the other slaves. I pictured it like a single patch of clear water in the middle of a swamp. untainted by its surroundings, gently undulating. One sentence was all she said, but there was something unbelievably calming about the sound of it. For a moment, I was filled with a sense of tranquility.
And though you may not believe it, I wanted to get her out of that filthy carriage. I want to undo the shackles threatening to taint her. And so I took action, driven by that desire. This is no lie, I promise. No! No, don't kill me! Please, you, want, you can have all my money! You can go free if that's what you want! Here we go, Yukimasa. You should do what you do best. Well, apologize. Anything! <laughs> oh, that was, um, Yukimasa. <laughs> well, why are you laughing? Please spare me! <laughs> I have a wife and children, please! <laughs> I beg of you! And why should I care? Holding a sword in my hand felt amazingly right. Whatever work I once did must have required me to use a blade. Even with the shackles still around my wrists, I had little trouble slaughtering the slave traders and their guards. They let their guard burn down because we were restrained. Uh, they let their guard down. I'm sorry. The fire is making me say it's it's it's, it's burned down. Jeez. They thought of anyone resisting never once crossed their mind. Dead bodies fall. Dead bodies sprawled around me. Corpses I had made. Lives I had snuffed out. Look at this. See. No one can defeat me. See? No one can defeat me. <laughs> they stood no chance against my strength. <laughs> <laughs> more! I need more! I need more! I don't have the words to describe the high it gave me killing those men. The power I felt over them. I was driven mad by the stench of blood filling the air. No, it just rot was all was what was already there. If I, if I weren't already deranged, the corpses would have had nothing to stimulate in the first place. After taking the keys off one of the slave traders. I returned to the carriage, doing my best to act calm, and suppress the babbling exhilaration. Hey, you! Unlock my shackles for me! I would do so myself if I could. 
You. Say something. Would you? <laughs> but she said nothing, simply removing my shackles as commanded. If she had, if she had said even one word, let me hear that curiously calming voice of hers. Then in all likelihood, I probably would have stopped there. But she remained perfectly silent. Everyone was in shock at what they, they, they had just witnessed, her included. In time, though, the slaves started cheering. The same people who had been wailing minutes earlier were now shouting praises. A savior! You are a savior! I'm free to go home! We could have our lives back. Undo our shackles, please. I'm a beast. Whoa! I'm not a savior. I'm not a man. I'm a beast. Isn't that right? I'm a beast, aren't I? W were you? <sighs> I need... I need more! I thirst for more! Whoa, whoa, why are you pointing it? I need more! In that moment, the last of my reason dissolved. I went to a frenzy, slaughtering the helpless slaves I had never intended to kill. God damn it, I feel so sorry for him. I was euphoric. I couldn't get enough. I reveled in it. Never before had I felt such utter ecstasy. Their cries for mercy as they ripped through them were delicious. The look of fear in their eyes. The way their state faces twisted. The splatters of blood around their mouths opening and scream. The despair that filled them. I didn't care any, any more that they were just as much victims as me. That they had suffered the same abuse and humiliation. Oh. 
All of that was buried beneath the waves of bliss that ravished me. Everyone who asked to be spared, I skewered. I worked my way around the inside of the carriage, killing dozens upon dozens of slaves. He heads went rolling off shoulders, hot geysers of blood spewing from open necks. I was practically wading through blood by that point. Some bodies I completely dismembered. Others I disemboweled, leaving their entrails to hang out of their open guts. All of them had looks of agony frozen into their faces as death took them. I don't know if I was uncon unconsciously avoiding her, or if it was just a coincidence. But the girl was the only one left alive. She, of course, hadn't been spared this mess, so she started drenched in sticky red gore. Her lips appeared to be trembling, though I couldn't tell for sure with so much of her skin missing. The fire inside me still burned white hot. She, she was the reason I had done any of this in the first place. I had stood up because I wanted to set her free. But my original intentions were long since gone from my mind. I bet that's what happened the next time. Oh my god. Raw pleasure overwhelmed any sense of reason. I approached the girl, pointing the sword at her neck. I expected her to scream, to beg for her life like the others. But she did nothing. Simply stared up at me. Why didn't you run? At my question, the girl finally spoke. Why did you kill- oh, that was, that's Morgana, sorry. Why did you kill them? The sound of her voice quelled- th The sound of her voice quelled the, f the furor within me. It baffled me. I had no control over it. Yet this strange girl could pacify me with a single utterance. The words she used didn't matter. It was her voice. She could have called me a monster, and it would have had the same effect. Because I felt like it. I couldn't explain my reason for murdering the slaves. I didn't have the words to express the things that drove me. All I could tell her was that I did it because I felt like it. And why haven't you killed me yet? I 
I couldn't find a sure answer for that question in my somewhat rattled mind either. In retrospect, I believe now that her voice was my first tether. But at the time, I had no idea why I didn't take her life in my frenzy. I had killed other children, other women. Young, old, sad, miserable. It didn't matter. Nothing had so much pricked my conscience. I don't know. I said, and then I stepped off the carriage and walked away. Left with questions I couldn't answer. Was I really a beast? Was unleashing my innate savagery and re reveling in the massacre of helpless people really all I wanted? I didn't know. My God. After escaping from the slave traders, I became something of a bandit. I had no hope of anyone taking me in. Nor, not only was I a murderer, I was a foreigner. Nor did I have any chance of finding decent work. So I live by the sword, killing and plundering. The money, I honestly didn't give a damn about. I had no desire to be wealthy. It was simply a matter of survival. That and quenching my thirst. I went on for about three years like that. until finally encountering something I couldn't defeat with my sword. Hello, Nana. Welcome to the stream. No amount of muscle was enough to protect myself from disease. One day, I woke up with the chills, my vision blurry, barely able to make out my own limbs. I set off for a nearby village, hoping to see a doctor. But my body didn't last that long. I collapsed onto the side of the road, drained of my last strength. It was a moderately busy road at that, so I assume I had made it close to the city. Dozens of people passed by, silently pretending not to see anything. I didn't look like someone a respectable person would want to involve themselves with in normal circumstances. So it was no surprise they weren't interested in this sick, filthy, foreign man. Hell, I couldn't remember the last time I had bathed. It was hard to look at me, let alone get anywhere near me. This is where I'm going to die, I thought. 
It seemed like a suitable end to a mad, murderous, monstrous life. Withering away on the side of, of the road, beneath sneering passers-by. And the fact that I was still alive at all after three years of leeching off other people's lives was itself wrong. I didn't lament my impending demise. I accepted that such was the way of the world. But then, I knew it. I knew she would have found him. I glanced up to see a woman in a nun's habit, looking down on me. Ah, uh, are you all right? Are you sick? I'm going to check your temperature, okay? Whoa! You're boiling up! You shouldn't be out here in this condition. Do you not have anywhere to go? Don't worry. I've got you covered. There's a torch not far from here. Hang in there just a little longer and you'll be fine, Bubby. And what is your God going to do for me? Uh, he helps people in need. <laughs> it's not very big. Well, we've always got room for people who need it. You can rest up in one of the open beds and I should be able to get you a little something to eat. I promise. It'll be better than staying out here at any rate. <laughs> oh my god. Can you stand? Um, n not a problem. We can do this together. Put your arm around my shoulders. The choice isn't that far. We can do it. Are going to carry me. Yup. Damn, Pauline's been working out. It'll be fine. I'll make it one way or another. Almost. We're almost there. Just a little longer. I'm heavy, aren't I? Very, very heavy, Bubby. But that's not a problem.
I can do anything if I put my mind to it. Just throw me into a ditch. Now, now. God doesn't like his children talking like that. We're almost there. We're almost there. So, how are you feeling? Better, I hope. I've left some applesauce on the bedstand if you feel enough to eat anything. And you are welcome to stay here as long as you need to, puppy. Why did you help me? Because that, that's what people do. They help each other. Because that's, that's what people do. They help each other. That's not what most people do. Exactly. Uh, I like to think it is. Oh, she's just like Jessica. All pure hearted and naive. You church people are exceptions. I'm not sure I agree with that. This woman is only showing me compassion because she doesn't know what I am. She wouldn't be so friendly if she knew I was a madman and a, and a murderer. If there's anything else you want, let me know. I can't make any fancy dinners, but if it's anything I can get, I will. Could you tell me your name? I'm... I'm Marie. Marie. After, uh, who was it? The Virgin? You are not familiar with the Virgin Mary? Just look at me. I'm clearly not from these parts. Ah, uh, yeah. I can see that. So would that make you a traveler? <laughs> you speak the language pretty well, though. I take it you've been here a while, then? Yes, I have. How exciting. So, you're feeling better. Maybe you could tell me about this country you came from. I've never been far from home. I'm curious about what it's like elsewhere. There's nothing I could tell you. It can be anything. Tell me about yourself if you want. I'm even less inclined to do that. Get better soon. Okay? 
I'm looking forward to hearing all about it, puppy. I'm not sure there's anyone out there more deserving of the Virgin Mary's name. What was that? Your name. It suits you. Oh, no, not at all. I'm incredibly flattered to hear you say that, though. But I hardly live up to that name. But I hardly live up to the name. What's your name, by the way? I... I have no name. You don't? If you want something to call me by, you can choose a name for me. If you want something to call me by, you can choose a name for me. Anything you want. Um. I am nameless. You give me a name. Oh my god, ugly speckles. <laughs> but this isn't Michelle he's asking though. I think... You should be the one to choose your name. I think you should be the one to choose your name. I'd be more than happy to help, though. But you should go with the name you think is best. I see. Well, I should get going. I'll be around. So if you need anything, just holler. Boy, then. How am I supposed to choose a name for myself? And I don't know anything about me. Okay, you guys, hold on a second. I just got to take a quick bathroom break. I will be right back.
I recovered quickly with a proper beard and roof over my head. Outside the road, I had been certain I stood no chance, but I was back on my feet after only three days at the church. My body was more resilient than I ever knew. I wonder if he had been an assassin or something. Like some kind of secret, you know, like a, and like he failed. Maybe he's like a Jason Bourne type of guy, but, you know, more corrupt. I wonder. And now that I was back in health, I had no intention of sticking around. Okay, David. Well, thank you for thank you for joining us. Thank you for everything. I would be dead if oh, thank you for everything. I would be dead if it weren't for you. No thanks necessary. I'm just glad to see you feeling better. There's no need to be in such a rush to leave, you know. Stay a bit longer. Make sure everything's all right. I'm not going to stay any longer than necessary. If you're sure. Take this as payment for the food and lodgings. I... I can't accept that, no. We don't charge for charity. Charity is not free. You paid for it. Let me pay you back. I can't. Please take the money. If you insist, I can keep it as a tithe. A tithe? Think of it like a donation to the church. Like you said. The work we do isn't free. All right then. A tithe it is. <laughs> Thank you. And may God bless you for your generosity. So long. Hey, you know, um, if you're ever, ever in the area... Uh, maybe you could stop by sometime. Keep me company. I never did get that chance to have that talk with you. Damn, she is head over heels a bit here. Just love struck. And I was really looking forward to it too. I'll just cause you more trouble. What? No, you wouldn't. Not at all. What makes you think that? Are you afraid you scare people off because you look different? I really don't think you need to be worried about that, baby. It's not just my appearance. I'm... Do you mean it? And it won't be any trouble having me around. I absolutely mean it. One billion percent. Okay. I'll consider it. Ah! Wonderful! I can't wait to see you again. Oh god, oh god. Yeah. Believe me, I knew I had no place involving myself with her. A killer making himself comfortable in the house of God. Hello, Void Dweller. I'm sorry. I said a, a billion percent. I don't even believe in their deity, and I still knew that it was nothing if not extremely disrespectful. The money I had donated to her church wasn't even clean. 
It was stolen. I didn't feel the slightest bit guilty about it, though. I was more than conscious of what I was doing, but none of that mattered to me. She had smiled when she took it. That was enough. Seeing the nun smile puts my heart at ease. Much like the sound of the slave girl's voice heard, se heard several years before, it restrained me, suppressed my urges. That smiling face was my new tether. I had always believed that I was at my happiest while torturing people. That my thirst for murder was ingrained into my soul. But as exhilarating as taking others lives was, there was a part of me that yearned for peace. I had gotten a taste of that with her, and I wanted more. Even knowing I had no place in that wor world, that peace was something I would never attain. Still, I longed for it. It started with brief visits every few months. In time, though, their frequency began to increase. Soon it was once a month, then twice, then once a week. The length of my visits gradually grew as well. Every time I showed up, the nun greeted me with a smile, quenching my thirst without the need for blood. The more we met, the more I endeavoured to be a normal man around her, or to play the part of one. I thought that if I acted like there was nothing wrong with me, that I wouldn't be out of place at her side. I wanted to feel like I belonged in that peaceful world where she lived. beginning to think you won't come in this week. I was having trouble deciding on, on what to bring you. You're always welcome here, you know. You don't have to bribe yourself in. But I appreciate it. Thank you. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't bring something. I brought a variety of fruits for you today, so you can share them with the children. <laughs> They'll be delighted. Thank you so much. It's nothing, really. So, have you decided on a name for yourself yet? Not yet, no. Nothing at all? It makes talking to you a little awkward. Not having anything to call you. In that case, the giant man is as good as anything. <laughs> Did it get under your skin? A little. Oh my god. I'm not that big, am I? We're all giants to little kids, Bubby. I do wish they'd be less, a little less blunt about it sometimes, though. Indeed. I suppose it's better than being, than being afraid of me. The children here have strong nerves. 
They're ordinary kids. You are just not a scary person. They only assume I'm harmless because I'm with you. What? You make it sound like you actually are dangerous or something. Because I am. I don't get so worked up about it. The only thing different about us is our race. Everything else is exactly the same. I'm not so sure. <laughs> you must have had some pretty awful experiences because of your appearance then. To make you so concerned about it. I wish I could say I understood your pain. That's not necessary. But if I could, then maybe I'd feel a little closer to you. She really loves him. If only I could ever be half the same race as you. Really, I wonder why she wishes that. You have nothing to gain from being more like me. You don't think so? I think there's a lot that would be nice about it. I'll probably have really pretty black hair at least. Wait, doesn't she? She had pretty black hair. She did have pretty black hair. I thought she did. In door number two. Is her hair not really black? Oh, I see. Oh my God. And she was. Because she wanted to be closer to him. That's right. She was half. She was half Japanese. In the next. Oh my God. That's right. Wasn't she? If I'm ever reborn, I'd like to be more like you. And she was. Oh my god. That's really interesting. It looks like... Oh yeah, that's right, because Morgana is like low-key granting their wishes, but in like a, in a monkey's paw kind of way in their next lives. Why are you so obsessed with being like me? I... I, um, oh god. Deep breath, Pauline. I just am? Oh. Yeah. That was about the time I started noticing the feeling she had for me. At first, I thought I was simply being egotistical. There was no way a woman like her would be interested in a man like me. But I couldn't think of any other explanation for the way she looked at me. Back then, I believed I loved her too. And that if we could be together as man and woman, then I would finally be able to obtain the peace I had so sought. That I could wash my hands of the killer within me, defeat the urges once and for all. That I could step out of the darkness I had lived in for so long. But how did he get the job with the Lord and then everything went a lot wrong? That I would be able to see the light. Holy shit, does he have so much in common with Michelle? That I would be able to experience love 
like any other ordinary man. So in the name of that hope, I took action. That foolish, naive hope. Uh, what are we doing out here? So late at night. Sorry for asking you to meet me on such short notice. I hope it wasn't too much trouble sneaking out. Uh, it certainly wasn't easy. So, you had something to tell me? What I'm about to tell you, every last word is sincere. And then once you've heard me out, I want you to turn me down. What? Over these past few months, I've come to at least somewhat understand the responsibilities and restrictions placed on you as a nun. And even ignoring the obligations you have. I know good and well I'm not a suitable match for you. Which is why, as I said, I would like you to turn me down. I still... I still want to hear it. I love you. Oh my god, Pauline. Poor Pauline. I fell for you the moment I first saw you. I... I know I don't deserve to be anywhere near you. But every time we meet, my desire to be with you grows stronger and stronger until it was out of my control. Turn me down, Marie, please, and I will stop trying to get close to you. I'm not, Marie. You're not... What? My real name is Pauline. Interesting how she refers to that as her real name. She really doesn't like being a nun other than being charitable. P Pauline. Marie is my baptismal name. It's not the name I was given at birth. I... I love you too. I fell for you the moment I voice laid eyes on you. I know it's forbidden, but I want to be with you too. Yep, I knew it. I knew it. Any free time I have, I want to spend it with you. Spend it with you. I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Thank you for being honest with me. No, thank you for not turning me down. Oh my god, wow. Where did it go wrong? Whoa! Talk of an anxious day. <laughs> I 
When you were asked me to meet you out here tonight, I wondered if that might be what it was about. I kind of felt like my heart was going to explode all day. Heart. Explode. Always get nervous about telling girls how they feel too, don't they? Y yes, we do. <laughs> Until now, I had no idea falling in love was so hard on the on the noise. Just thinking about you makes my mind turn to mush. It's hard work like that, you know. Is it really that stressful? Is it like that for you too? I yes. Thinking about you makes it impossible to concentrate. <laughs> Tell me something, but I've been Pauline. Huh? What is it? How exactly is it hauling in the waves? Oh god damn it, that was that was him. How exactly is it hard on your nerves? What? Uh how exactly? It's like, um, I'm in the clouds. I just want to scream and I want to jump into a lake all at the same time. That doesn't help me much. Could you be a little more specific? Really? Are you trying to embarrass me? Come on! I figured anyone would get that kind of metaphor. Looks like I gotta dumb it down for you. Uh, it's like... Um, uh, oh my god! <laughs> my whole body gets... Um... Really hot. <laughs> you mean you get aroused? Uh, aroused? No, 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 no. That's a very improper way to say for a nun. It, um, it... To, to put it bluntly? Yes. Damn, she just came right out and said it. She wants him badly. I see. You're a real joy, you know. You shouldn't go around trying to humiliate ladies. S sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, yo. Well, that was insightful. So I am not in love with her, or romantically attracted to her, or even physically attracted to her. Ouch! Damn! All I want from her is a smile. But that sounds like you're attracted in some way to her. Being around her doesn't arouse me. In fact, it does exactly the opposite. 
Really? My fire burns brightest when I'm not with her. It all makes sense now. I just want someone to keep me placated. I'm disturbed through and through. A murderer and a beast. <laughs> See? That's why I didn't want to say anything. I knew you would laugh at me. I truly am. I did ultimately get what I wanted out of the arrangement. She became my tether. Became an inv invaluable part of my life. Even if I had no real love for her. Because of it in became an invaluable part of my life. Even if I had no real love for her. When I was with her. I was at peace. That said, her presence didn't, co didn't completely rid me of my urges. I was still occasionally struck with bouts of insatiable thirst. I have overwhelming desire to mutilate anyone who came into my line of sight. And sometimes, Pauline became the object of that desire. It goes without saying that I never did draw my sword on her, but I had no way of knowing that when I might lose control. And if I ever did kill her, then there would be nothing left to keep me from regressing completely into a beast. Pauline and, uh, and I arranged regular nighttime meetings, though never once did I tell her how I truly felt. And I had no intention to either. When I was with her, I was in the role of her lover. She never questioned my love for her. And expressing hers to me caused her to smile even more than normal. happier she was, the more beneficial it was to me, spending time with her in this capacity. I was able to gain a deeper understanding of what kind of person Pauline was. That sounds like the line you get in uh, Danganronpa when, uh, when you move further up someone's uh, friendship events. Spending time with her in this capacity, I was able to gain a deeper understanding of what kind of person Pauline was. She was a deeply generous and compassionate woman. While I now understand her near compulsive deeds of charity were a result of the stress and uncertainty she felt about herself, at the time, I believe she was doing it because she genuinely wanted to.
I believe she wanted to save absolutely everyone. To be the saintest. Saintess. She had come to be known as. Damn, I have not. I did not expect I'd be talking every single. Practically every single word tonight in the Yuki Masa voice. Thank you, Apparition. Yeah, I can see that Yukimasa's story is going to continue for a while, a little longer, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a cliffhanger. Thank you, Apparition. Yeah, I will. This was a bit of a slow one today, wasn't it? F for how violent a person Yukimasa is, his story was very easygoing and relaxing. She gave assistance to anyone who sought it from her, without question. And as a result, the church's coffers quickly dried up. Her god did not supply her with an endless store of bread and wine, either. In the end, any endeavour to batter the intentions requires money. In time, her generosity turned excessive, self-destructive. She would even skip meals so that others could eat. In retrospect, that was probably my fault, too. As I pushed her toward wanting to be a regular girl. She pushed back against the desire by being even more charitable. Soon, her actions started making the other, other nuns' lives difficult. There are other nuns. I didn't know there were other nuns there. Giving her a less than favourable reputation within the church. I thought she was just taking care of that place all by herself. Still, she would tell me when when she, we met up how she wished she could help even more people. I mean, I knew she had assistants and stuff, but I didn't know there were other nuns living there with her. If doing so would give her peace, and if I could be a part of that peace, then I wanted to grant her wish. Or what could a killer like me do to help? Petty theory wouldn't make me nearly enough money to keep a church and orphanage running. An array large enough in scale to do so would inevitably be traced back to the source, which would ruin the church forever. How would a murderer require was a murderer to acquire such a large sum of money? I was ready to jump at any opportunity that presented itself when I received a summons from the Lord. Are we gonna see Jacopo? That's Yakupo in this in this world. Damn. Here. Okay, you guys. Well, I better change the title of this. I'll probably use this title for next time. Uh, but okay. So this is a bit of a slow one, you know, learning through Yukimasa's story, just like we had Mel's story. So I'm sure that Yakupo is gonna have his own story as well. Just changing the title of the stream here. Yeah, it's a pretty smug face, isn't it? <laughs> All right, now to save. I know to save, I have to. See, look where I am right here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, get rid of some old saves here. I'll just do one on each page here. Hopefully that'll be enough. The Killer and the Nun. Interesting chapter. Yep. Okay, so you guys. Uh, this is going to continue. Uh, two days from now. We'll see uh, how exactly he began working for Jacopo and what he did. And also tomorrow, we are going to start Kageboshi. We're going to continue Natsumi's story in Higarashi. So I'm excited for that. 
In the meantime, thank you all for joining. So much for joining me tonight. I really appreciate it. They can't all be like really exciting, but this is pretty interesting as far as, as, uh, as I think. Pretty calming and soothing. Hello, Archie Ritt. Thank you for joining us, everyone. So until next time, I'll say so long, farewell, of Rita Zane, good night. You are all the sweetest of hearts. See you. <laughs>